dear students in this lecture we are going to see about moment of inertia so the last few classes we have discussed about centroid and center of gravity of uh, uh, plane areas and we have seen some problems in finding out the centroid and center of gravity of composite plane areas now today we are going to discuss about moment of inertia and the topics we are going to discuss are the definition of a moment of inertia then we are going to see how to determine the moment of inertia of a standard sections by integration method we are also going to discuss about uh, perpendicular axis theorem and this theorem we are going to use uh, in solving the problems for uh, the determination of moment of inertia and also we are going to see about the polar moment of inertia then parallel axis theorem and also we are going to see the formula used to get the moment of inertia of standard sections and also we are going to discuss some of the problems in moment of inertia so let us start with the definition so moment of inertia is actually an important property and it finds many application in the design of civil engineering structures so it's nothing but uh, a property which measures the ability of the cross section of a body to resist bending or torsion so in the last uh, lectures we have seen uh, how to get the moment of a force about your point so we know that moment of a force about a point is the product of the force and the perpendicular distance between the point and the line of action of the force so if the force is p and the perpendicular distance is x then the moment can be calculated using p into x suppose if this first moment of the force is multiplied again by the perpendicular distance x that is px into x so the quantity we get that is px square is called as moment of the moment of the force or it is also called as moment of inertia so briefly we call moment of inertia as mi so instead of force in some cases we take area or mass of a figure or body into consideration then that second moment is called as second moment of area or second moment of mass so if we uh, see the units of moment of inertia so if the dimensions of a, a cross section of a body is given in meters then the unit of moment of inertia is meter power 4 and if the dimensions are given in millimeter the unit of moment of inertia is millimeter power 4 now let us see how to determine the moment of inertia by integration in concepts so for this uh, uh, we have considered this uh, plane area irregular plane area and uh, for getting the moment of inertia about uh, the reference axis that is xx and yy so we have considered a small strip uh, which is shown in green color here and uh, let uh, da be the area of this uh, small strip and uh, this x is nothing but uh, the distance uh, of this uh, uh, center of gravity of the strip from the y y axis and y is nothing but the distance between the center of gravity of the strip and the x x axis so according to the definition of the moment of inertia uh, moment of inertia of the small strip uh, about the y y axis is nothing but da into x into x which is nothing but da into x square and uh, from this uh, uh, moment of inertia of the elemental area so we can get the moment of inertia of the entire area by integrating the the equation da into x square therefore we get i y y is equal to summation da into x square so similarly we can get the moment of inertia of the whole area about x x axis using this equation that is i x x is equal to summation da into y square now uh, let us uh, extend uh, the integration principle now to get the moment of inertia of a rectangular section so for this uh, here we have uh, considered a rectangular section of width b and depth d so in order to get the moment of inertia by integration uh, uh, principle so we have uh, considered a small uh, uh, strip so the strip is uh, marked here in uh, green color so we have the strip pq and the thickness of the strip is dy 
and this strip is located at a distance of y from the uh, x x axis now uh, the, the area of this strip is nothing but the width b into thickness dy which is given by b into dy so the moment of inertia of this small strip about the x x axis it is nothing but the second moment of this area so which is nothing but area b into dy into y into y so now we get b y square dy so this is for uh, this moment of inertia equation is for this elemental strip now uh, in order to get the moment of inertia of the total area so we have to uh, integrate between the limit minus d by 2 to plus d by 2 because we have taken a strip pq parallel to the xx axis at a distance of y from the xx axis now in order to get the moment of inertia of the total area so we have to integrate between the limit minus d by 2 to plus d by 2 so we are integrating here so ixx equal to integral minus d by 2 to plus d by 2 d y square dy so b can be taken outside so integral minus d by 2 plus d by 2 y square dy so if you integrate this you'll get y cube by 3 then after substituting the limits we get i y y is equal ixx is equal to b d cube by 12. so similarly we can get the moment of inertia about y y axis which is d b cube by 12. so in order to get this uh, moment of inertia about the y y axis so we have to take a strip parallel to the y y axis and we have to integrate between the limit minus b by 2 to plus b by 2. So in that way we got i y is equal to d b cube by 12. So now the moment of inertia and the importance of moment of inertia can be explained by this. So as I already told the moment of inertia is a property which measures the resistance of the cross section to bending. So now we can see here so you have a beam the width is b and depth is d which is placed like this and the load is applied here so the beam is bending like this so the deflection is very large we can see here on the other hand if the same beam is turned like this it is the width is b and depth is d so now the width becomes the depth and depth becomes the width so if the same load is applied we can see the deflection pattern here so the deflection is less so what we can see here is so if you place the beam like this we know that ixx is bd cube by 12 so now b this is b and this is d so bd cube by 12 so this d is very small therefore the ixx bd cube by 12 is also very small whereas if you place the beam like this this is b this is d so bd cube so this since the depth is uh, large bd cube quantity is also large therefore ixx that bd cube by 12 will be very large therefore if you place the beam like this with the depth maximum then the deflection will be less that that means that the, if the moment of inertia is high then the tendency of the cross section to deflect is very less therefore it has more resistance to bending now we'll see moment of inertia of a hollow rectangular section so for this we have considered a section uh, which is hollow one so the outer rectangle the width of the outer rectangle is b and the depth of the outer rectangle is d and similarly the width of the inner rectangle is b1 and the depth of the inner rectangle is d1 so now here we need to get the moment of inertia about xx axis and yy axis so this section is symmetrical about both xx axis as well as yy axis so we know already the moment of inertia of a rectangular section about xx axis is bd cube by 12. Therefore for outer rectangle ixx is bd cube by 12. Similarly for the inner rectangle the moment of inertia about xx axis is b1 d1 cube by 12. Therefore for hollow section simply we can get ixx by subtracting the moment of inertia of the inner rectangle from the moment of inertia of the rectangle abcd. Therefore we get ixx equal to bd cube by 12 minus b1 d1 cube divided by 12 so similarly we can get the moment of inertia about the yy axis also so we know that, that already for rectangular section the moment of inertia about yy axis is db cube by 12 therefore i y y here for a whole rectangular section is db cube by 12 minus d1 d1 cube by 12 and uh, this equation or this relationship is valid only if the cg of the outer rectangle coincides with the cg of the inner rectangle 
Now uh, we are going to see an important theorem which is called as perpendicular axis theorem which also explains the concept of uh, the polar moment of inertia. So, so far we have uh, seen about the moment of inertia about the centroidal xx axis and the yy axis. Now uh, this theorem it tells you about the moment of inertia about an axis z z which is perpendicular to the plane and passing through the intersection of xx and yy axis. So according to this theorem, uh, this i z z is given by the summation of i xx and i y y. So this i xx is nothing but uh, the moment of inertia of the plane area about xx axis and y i y y is nothing but the moment of inertia of the plane area about y y axis. Now we need to get the moment of inertia about the axis z z which is perpendicular to the plane that is xy plane and uh, this axis is passing through the intersection of xx and yy axis. So according to this theorem izz is given by ixx plus iyy. Now this uh, uh, polar moment of inertia is very very important and it's another important property which uh, tells you about the measure of resistance of the cross section to torsion. So the greater the value of uh, the polar moment of inertia, so the lesser will be the torsion uh, because this Izz is nothing but summation of Ixx and Iyy. So if Izz is large, that means that your section has better resistance to torsion and if Izz is small, the section has the least resistance to torsion. So this is another important property which tells you about the resistance of the cross section to the torsion. Now we'll see um, how to uh, get the moment of inertia of a circular section. So for that uh, we have considered a circle which is uh, uh, shown here that is ABCD and the radius of the circle is nothing but R and this X X dash and Y Y dash or the axis of reference or the reference axis and here again we are going to apply the concept of integration similar to uh, a rectangular section and here we are considering a small ring elementary ring of radius x and the thickness of this ring is given by dx. Now again once again uh, similar to rectangular section we are going to find uh, the elemental area or the area of this elementary ring. So the area, area of this elementary ring is nothing but uh, uh, 2 pi x that is the circumference into the thickness. So 2 pi x into dx will give you the uh, area of the elementary ring and we have to find the moment of inertia of this elementary ring which is nothing but the second moment of area. So area here is 2 pi x into dx. So the second moment is nothing but into x into x. So we have 2 pi x cube dx. So this is the moment of inertia of this elemental ring with respect to xx as well as yy axis because we know that circular section is a symmetrical section about both xx axis as well as yy axis. Now in order to get the moment of inertia of the entire circular section again we have to integrate. Now we have to integrate between the limits 0 to r. So now after integration we get the moment of inertia of the entire section about the central axis. So we, we get izz is equal to integral 0 to r 2 pi x cube dx. So after integration we get izz as pi d power 4 by 32 after substituting r is equal to d by 2. And we know that according to the uh, perpendicular axis theorem this izz is nothing but ixx plus iyy and we know that since the circular se section is symmetrical about both xx as well as yy axis ixx will be equal to iyy. So after substituting this we get ixx is equal to iyy is equal to pi d power 4 by 64. Therefore for a circular section the moment of inertia about both xx axis and yy axis will be equal and the value will be equal to pi d power 4 by 64 and the polar moment of inertia of a circular section is given by pi d power 4 by 32. Now again uh, after uh, knowing the uh, moment of inertia of a circular section so we can easily get the moment of inertia of a hollow circular section and here uh, 
the diameter of the outer circle is capital D and the diameter of the inner circle or we can say the cutout circle is small d. So we know that Ixx for a rectangle, I mean for a circular section is pi d power 4 by 64. So for the outer circle Ixx is pi capital D power 4 by 64 and similarly for the inner circle the moment of inertia is pi small d power 4 by 64. Therefore, uh, for a hollow circular section about xx axis, the moment of inertia can be given as pi capital D power 4 by 64 minus pi small d power 4 by 64. So, after simplification, we get pi xx is equal to pi by 64 capital D power 4 minus small d power 4. And similarly, the iyy is also same as that of ixx since they are symmetrical and also the cg of the outer circle coincides with the cg of the inner circle. And the next thing is the parallel axis theorem. So this theorem is very very important and while solving the problems of uh, the moment of inertia of the composite plane areas. And uh, so far we have discussed about uh, the moment of inertia of the standard sections like rectangle, circle, etc. About the centroidal axis that is xx and yy. Suppose if you need to find uh, the moment of inertia of a plane area uh, about an axis which is parallel to the centroidal axis, then this theorem will be helpful uh, in get, getting the things done. So according to this theorem, it states that if the moment of inertia of a plane area about an axis through its center of gravity is denoted by ig, then moment of inertia of the area about any other axis ab parallel to the first and at a distance of h from the center of gravity is given by iab is equal to ig plus a into h square. So in order to explain this, now we have a, a plane area. Now uh, this g so this is the centroidal axis of this uh, plane area and you have a axis which is AB which is parallel to the centroidal axis and this AB is located at a distance of H from the centroidal axis. Now I need to get the moment of inertia of this plane area about the axis AB. So according to parallel axis theorem, if you know the moment of inertia of the plane area through the centroidal axis and if you know the perpendicular distance between the centroidal axis and the axis at which the moment of inertia is required, then we can easily calculate the moment of inertia through this axis AB as IAB is equal to IG plus area into H square. So this IG is nothing but the moment of inertia of the section through the centroidal axis and this small a is nothing but the area of the section and this H is nothing but the perpendicular distance between the centroidal axis and the axis through which the moment of axis is required. So this theorem, we're going to use it for solving the problems or for determination of moment of inertia for composite plane areas. Now let us see how to get the moment of inertia of a triangular section. Uh, so again, we're going to use the principle of integration. So for this, we have considered a triangle A, B and C. And similar to rectangular section, here we have taken a small strip PQ. So, just shown in green color again here. So, for the triangle considered, B is the width or the base width of the triangular section and H is the height of the triangular section. And we have taken a small strip PQ of thickness dx. So, this strip is taken at a distance of x from the vertex A. Now, we are going to apply the uh, law of similar triangles. So, by law of similar triangles, this PQ divided by BC. PQ divided by BC is equal to X divided by H. So we have this relationship as per the law of similar triangles. So from this we are getting this PQ. So this PQ is nothing but BC into X divided by H. Now this BC is nothing but the base width that is B. So B into X by H. So after finding out this PQ that is BX by H. So we can find the area of the strip easily. So the area of the strip is nothing but this PQ into DX. So this PQ is nothing but BX by H into DX. 
now we are going to get the moment of inertia of this strip pq about the base bc so we know that the moment of inertia is the second moment of area so the moment of this area is dx into h into dx into the distance we have to calculate so the distance is nothing but h minus x so h minus x into h minus x so this bx by h into dx is the area so the distance is h minus x so since it's a second moment of area h minus x into h minus x therefore we get bx by h into x minus h the whole square dx now again uh, in order to get the moment of inertia of the entire triangular section so we have to integrate so we have to integrate the moment of inertia of the elemental strip between the limit 0 to h so after integration we get the moment of inertia about the axis bc that is ibc is nothing but bh cube by 12 now in order to get the moment of inertia of the uh, triangular section through the centroidal axis again we have to apply the principle of uh, uh, parallel axis theorem so we know that ibc is equal to ig plus a into d square so from that equation so we get ig is equal to bh cube by 12 minus area of the section which is nothing but half into base into height that is area of the triangle into h by 3 whole square so from that we get the moment of inertia of a triangle through the centroidal axis we get bh cube by 36 so we have to know these two important equations with respect to triangular section so if you want to get the moment of inertia of a triangle through the centroidal axis the equation is bh cube by 36 similarly if you want to get the moment of inertia of the triangle about the base the equation is bh cube by 12 so here you have to note that we have applied the parallel axis theorem in order to get the moment of inertia through the centroidal axis now uh, so we have discussed uh, so far about uh, a rectangular section circular section hollow rectangular section hollow circular section and also triangular section so based on that uh, I have summarized here the moment of inertia of some of the standard sections so as we have discussed earlier for rectangle your ix x is bh cube by 12 where b is the width and h is the height similarly about the y by axis it is b cube h by 12 and similarly the pole of polar moment of inertia is nothing but ixx plus iyy so this ix and iy is nothing but the moment of inertia about this h and this h where this x dash and y dash they are the centroidal axis and this x is the with reference to base similarly with respect to this edge the moment of inertia is given by bh cube by 3 b cube h by 3 and similarly for a triangle uh, as we have discussed earlier so through the centroid the moment of inertia is given by bh cube by 36 similarly through the base the moment of inertia is given by bh cube by 12 similarly for a circle so here i x x will be equal to i y y which is nothing but pi r power 4 by 4 which is nothing but pi d power 4 by 64. So then the polar moment of inertia is nothing but i x x plus i y y therefore we get pi r power 4 by 2. So similarly for a semicircle uh, these are the expressions for getting the moment of inertia about x x axis and y y axis which is pi r power 4 by 8 and polar moment of inertia is pi r power 4 by 4 similarly for quarter circle we have i x x is equal to i y y which is equal to pi r power 4 by 16 similarly for polar moment of inertia it is pi r power 4 by 8 so this is the equation again for getting the moment of inertia of the ellipse now uh, with this background uh, let us see some of the problems uh, in finding out uh, the moment of inertia of the composite uh, plane area so the first problem considered here is uh, 
uh, a T section. So we have to get the moment of inertia of this T section. So with the which flange dimension is 150 millimeter by 50 millimeter and the web dimension is 150 millimeter by 50 millimeter. So we have to get the moment of inertia of this T section uh, about uh, xx axis and yy axis which passes through the center of gravity of the section. So now uh, uh, the first uh, the task here is to locate the center of gravity of the section. So for this uh, we are dividing the given T section into two areas area 1 and area 2 that is two rectangles rectangle 1 and rectangle 2 and uh, as far as the given section is concerned the section is symmetrical about y y axis therefore the center of gravity of the section lies on this y y axis and uh, in order to get the center of gravity of the section so we are taking the bottom of the web as the reference axis and uh, we know that uh, uh, the center of uh, centroidal distance y bar can be calculated from summation a y divided by summation a so here the given uh, t section is consisting of two rectangles therefore y bar is equal to a1 y1 plus a2 y2 divided by a1 plus a2 so using that equation uh, we have determined y bar as 125 millimeter and in order to get the moment of inertia about xx axis so first we are considering the first rectangle and for the first rectangle first we are getting the moment of inertia uh, through the centroidal axis so ig1 which is nothing but bd cube by 12 so here for the first rectangle is b is 150 mm and d is 50 mm therefore ig1 is 150 into 50 cube by 12 and uh, in order to get the uh, moment of inertia of the uh, rectangle 1 about the centroidal axis I mean uh, xx uh, so we have to get the perpendicular distance between the center of gravity of rectangle 1 and the xx axis so that distance h1 is nothing but 175 minus 125 so this 175 is nothing but 150 plus 50 divided by 2 so that gives you 175 minus y bar so y bar is nothing but 125 so we got h1 is equal to 50 millimeter so now we got uh, the moment of inertia of uh, section 1 about xx axis is nothing but i g1 plus a1 h1 square so we got 20.31 into 10 power 6 millimeter power 4 so similarly for the second rectangle considered we have to get the moment of inertia through the centroidal axis so we get uh, here now uh, the width is 50 and depth is 150 so bd cube by 12 so 15 to 150 cube by 12 so that will give us this value and similarly we have to get the distance between the center of gravity of the rectangle 2 and the centroidal axis so we get this distance as 125 minus 75 which is 50 millimeter so in a similar way we got the moment of inertia of rectangle 2 about xx axis so we got the value as 32.81 to 10 power 6 millimeter power 4 so the ixx is nothing but uh, you have to add the previous two values and we got the answer like this and for the yy axis since the section is symmetrical about the yy axis so we need to just add the moment of inertia of rectangle 1 and rectangle 2 about the yy axis through the centroid so it is db cube by 12 this is also db cube by 12 therefore iyy will be equal to the moment of inertia of the first section about y y axis plus the moment of inertia of the second section about y y axis now coming to the second problem it is uh, t uh, it is i section again you have to get the moment of inertia of this i section about x x and y y axis so as usual we have to get or we have to locate the centroid of the given i section so here also the section is uh, uh, symmetrical about y y axis therefore the center of gravity lies on this axis so we got y bar by summation a y divided by summation a so here we have divided the i section into three sections rectangular sections section 1 section 2 and section 3 therefore y bar is a1 y1 plus a2 y2 plus a3 y3 by a1 plus a2 plus a3 so we got y bar is 60.8 millimeter and here also uh, we have taken uh, uh, the bottom face of the bottom flange as the axis of reference. 
and in a similar way so we have to get the moment of inertia of rectangle 1 rectangle 2 and rectangle 3 through the center of gravity axis which is parallel to the xx axis so we got ig1 ig2 and uh, ig3 and similarly you have to find the perpendicular distance between the center of gravity of each section and the centroidal axis so that is nothing but h1 h2 and h3 so so we got ig1 ig2 ig3 similarly h1 h2 h3 then you have to get the moment of inertia of each section about xx axis using the parallel axis theorem then you have to add all the values to get the moment of inertia of the given i section about the centroidal axis so the answer is uh, this